Hey guys, and welcome to episode four of Office Hours, the Rocket Jump Film School podcast. And today we are talking with a friend of Rocket Jump, Daniel Johnson, who cuts trailers professionally and actually cut the season three VGHS trailer as well as our Netflix trailer. And we have Cherish Chen, our producer for the film school, who actually came from a producing background in trailers before she came here. So we're going to talk about what makes a good trailer and kind of the industry process behind that. So uh, hope you guys enjoy. Rocket Jump Film School, scene one, Apple, take one, Mark. Hey guys, welcome to another Office Hours podcast with Rocket Jump Film School, and today we're going to be talking about what makes a good trailer, and I have Daniel Johnson and Cherish Chen, uh, from our film school, <laughs> talking about trailers. Hey guys. Hello. Hello. Thanks Hello. for thanks for talking with us hey, today. Of no course. Problem. Um, can you introduce yourselves really quick? I know I said your names, but just talk a little bit what you do and what your experience is. Uh, I'm Daniel Johnson, and uh, I am an editor, and mainly I work on TV spots and trailers for movies. Uh, I've also worked on a few of the trailers you may have seen for Rocket Jump's various projects over the years. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, you guys should hopefully know me. I'm Cherish. I'm the Rocket Jump Film School creative producer. But uh, in a previous life, I was an associate producer at a trailer house. So I spent a couple years uh, producing trailers, TV spots. Um, but not the same one. No, we were at different <laughs> we're at, we're com- competitors. We were competitors. <laughs> Uh, we're spies. Mm-hmm. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. We're not spies. Let's talk a little bit about the process of how, at first, like how trailers get made. Like, what? Who's in charge of that? How? Like, how does that whole process start? Well, in the industry. Well, in the okay. Industry, in that's the, that's the question. I mean, I could answer, but you should answer the industry stuff. Okay. Well, from the <laughs> industry standpoint, usually, um, the flow would be basically a producer would get a job, more or less. It's very client based. So the client is usually a studio. Sometimes it could be a filmmaker themselves, mm-hmm. um, bringing it into you to be like, okay, I need a, I need a trailer done or mm-hmm. a TV spot, mm-hmm. whatever. And then they might request an editor. Sometimes not. The producer will just kind of decide the who's best. Decide who's the right for the project and who doesn't have too much on their plate or who's available. You know that sort of thing. Yeah, there's a lot of elements to <laughs> it. And then, um, yeah, then the, the the process I'd say once it gets between editor and producer varies, depending on what their relationship is, mm-hmm. like what their process is. It can usually be, you know, they'll either do um, a music poll first, and they can right. offer, operate off that. A lot of times you'll get direction from the client about specifically what they want, um, where the trailer is gonna play, yeah, to what audience, you know, um, what their demo, what the movies, what they want the movie yeah. to feel like. Yeah, you know, like a Comic Con trailer is gonna be really different from. A theatrical trailer right. or um, something that'll only be on the internet, you know. So that all varies. I find that gets much more specific with TV spots. TV sp- like trailers mm-hmm. are generally like just make you know just, just sell a movie, get people excited about the movie. Whereas a TV spot's much more like this is for kids. This TV spot's for moms. This TV spot is for like you know old men. Like things like that. <laughs> like it's like seriously. They very, like yeah. they get very very specific about mm-hmm. like what audience you're playing to based on what time slot the TV spots are going to air and things like that. Like it yeah. gets very nitty gritty down or there. Or what channel? You know, yep. like yeah. sometimes you'll mm-hmm. do a more general one for, you know, ABC, and then you'll do or, a really uh, kitty one for a Disney XD. Or the, you know, there's always that urban one okay. they do. I know. They do. <laughs> yes. That's yeah. Well, that's anyway, always weird. That's, that's a always little a little tidbit into the marketing. Yeah, world. you're like, oh, can we just sell the movie? But uh, whatever. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it gets very businessy. But yes. um, yeah, and then after you kind of get direction about what you're specifically doing, it can get into like, yeah. Music pulls is usually my favorite part, but sometimes the editors just want to jump into it. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, you know, you can't, music is a huge part of trailers. Uh, and sometimes, you know, you can use music from the movie, but often music from the movie isn't necessarily the right for the trailer itself. Sometimes there are. Sometimes you're watching the movie and you go, oh my gosh, that's the song. That's the, that's the you know, piece of music that we can just, you know, use for the trailer. But a lot of the time it's like, no, trailer music has a very distinct feel and flavor and you want to make sure that you find something for that. So, you know, sometimes you bring something to the table, it's either, it can be specifically music written for trailers or sometimes it's like a pop song or, you know, not even a pop song, just a little bit of well-known song that fits kind of what the movie's about and kind of gets the tone of the movie. Um, and 
I often, because I love music, I do try to come up with those things myself, but of course you have music people who specifically, they know that stuff really well and they mm -hmm. bring, you kind of talk with them about general feels until you kind of come up with something that's maybe yeah. going to work and you try it out. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say the cool thing about trailers is kind of like a mini uh, film production in yeah. the sense of like you have all these roles, it's very collaborative. Mm -hmm. um, except it's almost all based in post, right? Yeah. So you've got like a music su supervisor, you've got graphics people, mm -hmm. you've got writers who are, you know, like sometimes Copy they'll, writers, yeah. Yeah, they'll do copy or else they'll script out the whole thing about like exactly if it's, you know, for certain cases when movies are very complicated and you're trying to, you do need to convey what the movie's about. Right. Uh, usually in a, a very short can, time. Yeah. yeah a I mean, writer can help. And that's that the out. thing, I don't want to jump the gun here. Well, I'll, I'll save it for later. I'm gonna, we'll get into that later. I was going to talk about how you structure a trailer in general. Yeah. Um, but um, well, we can we can we'll get, there. get into that. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, well, let's yeah, let's talk a little bit about actually. Um, and I thought I thought the the idea of tailoring trailers specifically to specific audiences was really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, what is what's an interesting trend that has been happening in trailers recently that has stuck out to you? Uh, I feel like there's always these cycles of like, you kind of like see one trailer does something really interesting you haven't seen before and then all the trailers do it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, like a few years ago, it was like, I'm sure you guys all, everybody caught up on this too, but like it was the Inception trailer. And I saw that Inception trailer, I thought that trailer is awesome. I loved it. You know, the big old, the Inception. Yeah. and um and like then every trailer did that. It just did like big, loud, boomy noises as like a main thing they build to the trailer. And it kind of got, people got kind of sick of it. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, there was the Social Network trailer, which I thought was really, really, really great when it came out that used that Scala song. Um, it was a cover of... Uh, you can't always get what you want. No, no, no. One? It was not. It was... No, oh, no. I'm thinking about the trailer Different that just one. came out. That was the newest one. And the Scala, Creep? it used... Creep, yeah, yeah. It used yep. for uh, the social network, and it was great. It was awesome. It made like liking like a Facebook post like the most profound thing I've ever seen, um, <laughs> and it was wonderful. And then, uh, and now every trailer does like the creepy cover of like a song. So yeah. like, I know. I mean, I, I'm I know a bunch of more have done this, but I mean, Avengers did. I actually like the way Avengers did. I thought Avengers did a good job Suicide with it. Squad. But now, and then we just had Suicide Squad this last week that was doing it too, and it was just like, okay, guys, like the creepy little kid thing has kind of been played out. I mean, even um, they'll keep doing it. They'll keep doing it. But they did it with Maleficent. Had like the like cover of Once Upon a Dream and everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we recorded that. Yeah, I know it was great, but it was like it's that like that's ours. the thing now is like now you like find like a slow creepy version of this of a well known song, and like yeah. that's your thing. So yeah. you, they, you know, yeah. things come and go. I would say another trend is, um, you know, in a lot of superhero movies is floating voiceover um, over just cool shots that yeah. aren't really linked. But that's because yeah. a lot of movies nowadays are based off properties we already know, right? So you yeah. can, it, it is like very hype mm -hmm. based because you don't need to know who that voice is because you can kind of start inferring right. who that is. Yeah. So that's pretty popular. Um, I think the hard thing about trends, though, that it... Because we watched, I, uh, I used to watch so many trailers every day. Right. That was my job, right? So you would get caught up in what was doing really well. You had all these trailers you loved, and it was so hard to break then out of the new. trend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to not be directly influenced by what is popular right now or what is really cool right now. Right. Um, you know, you'd be working on um, a heist movie, and you're like, oh, that, or like an action movie, and be like, oh, the Kingsman trailer was so cool. You know, right, then right. you're like, how do I not? Just make do that the trailer Kingsman trailer again. again. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I mean, sometimes, <laughs> I mean, I'm good. honestly, sometimes you get a movie that's not very good. You get that a lot, and you kind of just like, well, uh, let's just see how this other good movie did it, because we just kind of got to sell it the best we can. But uh, yeah, ideally, you're going to try to do something new and different that really makes it stand out, makes it different, and yeah. that sort of thing. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and speaking on that, like, um, let's kind of get into it, what, what you guys think is makes a good trailer, mm -hmm. and how do you go when you're looking at footage and looking at movies and stuff like that what's the decision like how do you start pulling things how do you go in with like kind of a plan or do you go in with like let's see what's interesting yeah. about this film i think you should talk I'll about your I'll process talk about my process which yeah. is different for everybody um but when i get asked hey dan can you check out this trailer if it is for a, a job with the producer um or if there have been some general directions i keep that in mind but i generally try to watch the movie once completely dry just kind of like, okay, movie, show me what you got. Like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna like have too many preconceived notions about things. I'll kind of keep my ears open and eyes open in terms of like, oh, that's a cool shot, that's a good moment. Um, 
that's like a great line. Like you always, you guys, I'm sure know this, can see this, but you always find those trailerly like talkback lines. Like, you know, they're always like, "Nice job," or, you know, "That was cool." That was cool. Or, Whoa, or like whatever it is. Like those, you always like those yeah. moments. You're like, okay, make sure you make a note of that. Like good talkbacks and things. Um, but you generally, I try to watch the movie once. Uh, if if we've been done, which usually isn't, but whatever, whatever they have, uh, mm -hmm. I try to watch once, and then um, and then I go back and I kind of comb through it and like organize everything by like good character shots, good scopey shots. I kind of like break it all down in my own way into like all the little like lines and moments and things that will be you know nicely organized. Especially if I'm going to be working on a movie that's not just a trailer, but I'm going to be doing TV spots and things for it too. What like kind of category? What other categories do you organize them? Uh, depends. That might it, be useful. Like, what, is, what do you no, think no, is the right. most useful? Um, it does depend on the movie, um, but I usually do. Um, my main ones I usually do are character um, characters. So I do like really good ID shots. You always want to get those cool head turns, right? Ugh, the characters turning their heads really cool. Mm -hmm. So you always do cool head like character <laughs> so IDs, weird. ones that really ID the characters, um, and I organize those by character. Um, definitely the talkbacks. Uh, if it's a comedy, I definitely like organize like quick, quick, quick specific jokes, mm -hmm. um, good jokey setups. Um, scope is a definite one I do. Big scopey shots that show how much money the movie spent, how pretty and giant and huge the movie production is. Production value, production type value, kind stuff. of things. And you know, those are always good ones to just kind of like open a scene with, and you go kind of down into it or something. Would that include um, like cool VFX and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it depends on what you got. Yeah, VFX, mm -hmm. scopey things, just things that make you go like, wow, like wow, they mm -hmm. did that. Um, and then uh, I definitely do uh, action, I usually do, and then kind of a subset of that, or depending on the movie I get, even more important than that is I do one called Accents, which mm. is really cool, it's kind of hard to describe, but like cool, quick little like moments, like if a character just turns and cocks a gun really quick or something, mm. it's like those are things you can just punch up the end of a scene um, and kind of use to, you know, yeah, punch into things and kind of get in and out of places really quick. Uh, I also do, I usually, for like, especially like a, horror movie sometimes or something I kind of do like vibe is what I have which is a weird thing to describe <laughs> but it's like anything yeah. that's kind of like ooh that's cool and vibey and weird and atmospheric. strange atmospheric and yeah. like kind of gives you a weird feeling without being anything specific I that one's always just kind of like a kind of like grab bag of like I don't know throw it in there <laughs> um and what else? I think that's that's generally a pretty the, good. Yeah, no, that's batch a, that's, of stuff. A, yeah. that's really good. That's, I, the accent yeah. I always think of is when people cut comedy and then the laughs. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like the you say something raunchy or whatever. Yeah. There's a joke and you need to end that joke. The the that, a lot of editors yeah, for, cut in the ha ha ha. Yeah, like, the, like, like, well, like that's yeah. the reaction or something. I mean, <laughs> that my favorite is I I've said this told you guys this before. Um, but like for comedy is, is like we literally have two sound effects uh, called oh. dog. I think they're called. I call them. I call them dog what, which is that dog noise that the dog goes. Rrr. And uh, <laughs> like we have two, but dog what two is the better of the two dog what's. Um, and that's like a in comedies like they always have the dog like Rrr, like that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. They also have um glisten. What don't you have like a glisten? I'm not, don't gonna, you? I'm not gonna tell that. It's my secret. I don't mm. want to give away mm. some. Okay, of those I know effects. some of Dan's trade secrets. Yeah, trade we secrets. Can't. Sound secrets. Yeah. I give think away he, everything. Twinkle, yeah. you're talking yeah. about. I'm, not, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Sound no, effects, he though. Can't, he can't give it away. Yeah. Yeah, I think... Well, Dan, technically, I mean, whatever. Go ahead. Uh, I was <laughs> like, obviously, so much of trailers is editorial, but I think people forget the sound design element yes. of it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I think a lot of trailers... It's like sound with f production in general. Yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. it can be often overlooked. I think that's actually the... I mean, I think that's the trickier part, the harder part, the part that really makes or breaks the trailer. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because sure. it's almost more invisible. Yeah. Um, and then you don't really listen for it unless you're trained in doing it, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, but I think you covered really well what makes a good like the process of putting together a trailer from an industry standpoint because you work. Yeah. In industry, I think like for our for like people yeah. who are like filmmakers who like, really want to cut about their that own too. trailers. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Like I think what makes a good trailer. I think that was your original question. Yeah. Right? Well, like what? We're just going all over the place. Yeah. But yeah, let's we're like, crazy. Like, let's um, get into it. What makes a like, good trailer? I think what makes a good trailer if you're gonna cut it yourself. Like what I look for because I didn't edit necessarily mm -hmm. yeah. when I did it, but what stands out is. I'm trying to think of good advice. Like I, I always like think a, personality or like perspective. Yeah. You know, in in terms of your editorial, is always stands out. Well, yeah. What I do, and actually, I think it's, and I actually think this is true with uh, short films and feature films. Even is, I think this is a real reason why I think even a director who is an editor should really bring in another editor because you always want another pair of eyes. And I'd say the same thing with a trailer. But um, 
uh, is, uh, you know, you, a lot of people, I think, when they're trying to make fan trailers or their own trailers for their own projects and things, they kind of just go, okay, well, I'm just going to get a good song and I'm going to lay that song down and I'm going to have, just have images from the movie and that's going to be it. And that'll be great. I'll use some lines here and there and it'll be awesome. And that's fine. But like a really good trailer is in many ways its own short film. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, even if it doesn't tell, you know, I don't, I personally, I know this is a complaint about a lot of big movie trailers. I don't like that trailers tell the whole story. I hate when they do that. Sometimes we don't have much choice, but, um, I really still, you still do want to kind of say, okay, here's your setup. Here are your main, here are your characters. Here's their big problem. Here's what they're going to face. Here's what they're going to be doing. I mean, that's very much a story trailer, Mm -hmm. but even if you're not doing a story trailer, like you still want to make sure there's a very strong structure that your viewer can follow and not just be a bunch of random images. I mean, I, not to toot my own horn too much, but a good example of like not being a story trailer, but still very much conveying a narrative was the season two trailer I did for video game high school. Mm -hmm where I kind of like, that whole trailer was about, hey, the whole point the trailer was saying was, hey guys, we're doing another season, it's season two, and all your favorite characters are back, and they all have a new problem to face. And so, you know, it starts out with kind of the goofy bit about the law, because he's kind of like the big villain, right? And you kind of see he's doing something. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of launches in, and, you, and I definitely used a pod for each of the four main characters uh, that kind of specifically said, here's the thing they're all doing. And it kind of was like, okay, I get it. Like, that's what yeah. season two is going to be. Yeah. New new problems for their old characters, you know, mm-hmm. kind of thing. I think the a practical bit would be like, I think when people say, or you watch tutorials on how to cut a trailer, mm-hmm. a lot of them are based in like gimmicks, like, oh, you can dip to black yeah. and use, you know, like this cool kind of copy. And it's like, I don't think that's a good way to go about it. I think it's really look at, the mm-hmm. material you're trying to cut a trailer for, the movie, right. and like I, I totally agree with you. I think it's about telling a story that hooks you and right. intrigues people, mm-hmm. um, and that shouldn't rely on, you know, flash it shouldn't, cuts. It shouldn't or, be about or, it, yeah, it's it'd be, cuts, it'd, I mean, all that technical stuff is great, and that can really polish up a, a movie that doesn't have a lot going for it. But um, you know, that's just if you have a good interesting hook that makes people go oh man i really i can't wait to see where that goes or what that's mm-hmm. about then mm-hmm. then you're then you're, then you're yeah. in a great great place yeah. well, i think that's kind of amazing because <clears throat> one of the things we talk about at the film school is everything goes back to serving your story mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and to say that even the trailer for the story yeah. goes back to serving the story yeah um the story should inform the form of the trailer yeah. and i mean and i and like on top of that, I don't, I don't mean lay out your whole movie necessarily like my yeah. favorite trailer from this past year was the uh, Comic Con? I guess it's over a year now, but uh, the Comic Con piece for Mad Max, which was also <laughs> yeah. just a totally rad movie, but um, which <laughs> helps when you have an awesome movie. But what I love about that trailer is that if you watch that trailer, you might just think, oh, it's just a bunch of random stuff. But they still very introduce the who Max is and that it's a broken world, right? And then they kind of just go nuts. And it's all about hitting the vibe of that movie, though. That mm-hmm. whole trailer is just like, you kind of don't know too much other than like Max is in this crazy world. Mm-hmm. But that's all you need. And it definitely gets the sense of what it's all about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's also a very important thing to hit is like the tone of the movie. Yeah. yeah. I think the Mad Max Fear of the entire campaign was um, a really, really interesting case study mm-hmm. for, for how... I mean, that's, it's kind of an ideal case study because it's the movie was so yeah, it was, beloved it was by just, like people who were cutting years and years ago. You know, they were, everyone wanted to just work on trailers and TV spots, anything they could do because the movie was so good. Mm-hmm. And the imagery was so cool. Yeah. Um, but I guess the, the different perspectives that came out of mm-hmm. everything that finished, every trailer, every TV spot is really interesting because yeah. it represents a lot of different... And I felt, I mean, and talking about something that finally didn't just do the whole old, same old bag of tricks, like that mm-hmm. campaign was totally different and weird and experimental and cool. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of people behind it. They did yeah. Really good job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I, cause I, I worked on the Mad Max main trailer and I remember that whole process was so arduous, but like that it, it's so encouraged people to try whatever they want to do. So yeah. I think that's an important thing is it, is it don't resist the mm-hmm. urge to use a bag of tricks use the movie, use your own personality yeah. in terms I mean, of the editorial, you, have fun with it. Um, learn a bag of tricks, absolutely, yeah. but have those as tools, not as your, not as your yeah. thing sure. you just yeah. go Yeah, you to. gotta know the rules before you can break yeah. them. Mm-hmm. Um, but on, in, from the story level, like that main trailer, people didn't know it when it first came out because they hadn't seen the movie, but that trailer's incredibly linear because the story is so linear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So 
if you watched it, it's like the beginning of that trailer was the beginning of the movie, and yeah. it just mm-hmm. lent itself to that. So examining and you, and you, what's you see so, that how she's the got the works. girls, and they're they're escaping. You yeah, know, they get you get that she's on the run. Yeah, yeah exactly. Totally. I mean, <laughs> we experimented with like jumping around the movie and using different action sequences up front and stuff like that, and it just didn't tell right. the story because mm-hmm. the story was so clean already. Yeah. So again, it's it's kind of like finding. You can look at your own movie that you're trying to cut a trailer for and find your own hook, I think. Mm-hmm. And and determining what that is can be tricky. But yeah. I, I mean, guess, you know, a lot of other opinions, asking another editor helps. Yeah, getting know. other people's eyes on it. I mean, making sure, testing your trailer, just like you test your movie, but saying, like, I mean, the, you know, big, big movies do testing too to make sure that the people are understanding things. But yeah, take, mm-hmm. ask your friends over and say, hey, do you understand what's going on? What do you, what do you understand from this? What'd you get from this? Does it make sense? Does it not? Kind of like, you know, and you, and you know, you don't want to telegraph everything, but you want to make sure that they're following kind of the basics of mm-hmm. what's happening. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Awesome. Um, Is there like a, like a good length for a trailer, do you think? Is there like a standard? Um, I mean, that's, for, controversial. That's, that's a good question. It is a good uh, question. Yeah. I think generally, um, a good length for me is once you go, I think once you go over two thirty, even if you cut the best trailer ever, I think you're getting too long. Mm. I get, I get kind of bored. Um, but they oh. are ones that are longer than that. I think, I think, I mean, I always honestly just cut until I, and it sounds silly, but if, if I get a movie that's not through work and it's just kind of on my own that I'm working on just for fun. Or, or for a little extra money, whatever. Um, but you know, <laughs> hey, I'm not gonna be honest here. Um, but you know, it's it's for it's for people I know, and it's something I want to do, and it's a cool project. Um, you know, I kind of just cut it until it feels good. Yeah. And I, I, mean, I usually find that they're a little over two minutes or something like that. You know, it depends. Yeah. Um, so. I like ninety seconds. Ninety seconds, mm-hmm. like ninety. I think ninety seconds is a right smack dab in the middle of what you want. I feel like a lot of, like 2.30, 2 minutes, 30 is, seconds is the standard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, you know, it's there for a reason. It's tied up into industry stuff with obviously theaters and stuff like that. But um, I think that's just, that makes sense for a bigger movie where yeah, you're trying for, to convey sure, a lot. Sure, for fair enough, yeah. But I think for indie filmmakers, filmmakers who are trying to cut their own stuff, usually 90 seconds is all. 90 to two minutes. You need whatever. to yeah. get... I'm sticking to my 90 seconds. Right, I'm sticking to my 90 seconds, Dan. You can't <laughs> bring me over. You know. uh, How I long was the trailer we cut for uh, the series trailer? I think that was about 90. Was it about 90? Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. Uh, <laughs> All right. We can, I, you, you can I'll rub it in my face if it's totally wrong. No, I don't know. Like, that sounds about right It's like to me. four minutes. I oh, think no. that one was, was shorter than this other ones I cut, so I was just curious. Yeah, I think 90 is a good way to kind of like hint at what you're talking about and then right into it. But overall, the principle that Dan said is right, whatever. Whatever feels Whatever right. Whatever feels right. I definitely, you know, you know, especially watching a lot of trailers, you know, you, you I definitely watch a trailer now and new big trailer hits, right? I check it out. And I definitely sometimes get kind of bored halfway through the trailer. And to me, it's like you want to leave them wanting more, not yeah. being bored of your movie before it's ever come out. So. Yeah. If we're going to get really specific. Like the, all those Comic-Con trailers just came out, you know? Yeah. And mm-hmm. Comic-Con trailers, I understand, are, you know, they're, they're definitely specific. You want them to be big. They're longer. They're usually like three to four minutes because they're for fan service. Yeah. You're playing them event. in a big theater. Yeah. You know, those, yeah. People are going to feel cheated if they waited all night long and see, you know, they want to see yeah. something long. Yeah. They yeah, want yeah, totally. footage. Yeah. They yeah. want visuals. They want mm-hmm. a lot of stuff. So I get it. Releasing them online always feels weird to me because people see trailer and they think, oh, that's yeah. its own complete little story wrapped up. Mm-hmm. And it's not, it's for a totally different purpose yeah. than a trailer typically is right. for a mass audience. Yeah. Right. But um, yeah, usually I think those are too long. Like uh, if we're going to get really specific. I Go think ahead. The, like, like the Batman versus Superman one, you every time it dipped down, it feel it felt like it was gonna be over, and then it came back up. Mm-hmm. It did that like three times, yeah. you know. And I think that's that makes sense for Comic Con, mm-hmm. totally, but not for a general I mean, I, audience. I'm sure that when they release the real trailer that we'll be seeing in theaters, it'll be something like that trailer, probably shorter. Yeah, but, it'll probably be a cut yeah. down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess the weir- another weird thing that we can talk about is how there's a, all this weird language. Yes, there's the a lot edit- of in the the weird weird lingo. We have sure. our own lingo in the in the trailer yeah. world. Oh, gosh. Uh, let's see. I don't know. Cut downs is one. Yeah. Cut downs is like, hey, so we cut this trailer, uh, but now we want to put it on TV. So uh, we're going to make it 60 seconds long. Now we're going to make it 30 seconds long. Now we're going to get 15 seconds long. 10, 5. 10, 5. Radio I mean, spots. Radio spots, yeah. So you kind of take <laughs> the original thing and then you kind of just keep – well, that part doesn't need to be said, I guess, and that part doesn't need to be said, I guess, and am I there yet? No, I still got to lose more, and you kind of just keep narrowing it down. So um, what else? 
Is a vocab lesson even interesting? I, I don't have, even know. Well, my favorite, <laughs> my favorite one, I'll just say my favorite one that we established when we were in, uh, I don't know if this is like w- widespread, but it's the dog waffle, which There's is, I've never waffle? heard of that. I don't even know what that the is. The dog waffle It's basically like the, this editor I worked with, I think got it from another editor or maybe she came up with it. But um, the dog waffle is basically, you know, when you are making waffles in the morning and the first one you do is always kind of shitty and, and ugly, so you give it to the dog. Because <laughs> so the, the pan's still warming up. Yes, right? exactly. So it's, you're testing so it so out. You're getting your first your, cut, basically, your, your V1. It's basically, it's the sacrificial lamb. It's the one yeah. that you give to the client first to be like, wasn't that good? It was okay. okay, here's the better one, though. Here's yeah. The yeah. One. <laughs> <laughs> so have, it's, it's, that's very producery. The, that's, yeah. Editors don't care about that. Editors think that everything they cut is amazing. I know. They, or actually, we don't, or, we don't tell well, you. They, they think that everything's amazing, and they also think everything's terrible, just like any creative person. Oh, yeah. That, you're yeah. highly neurotic about your own cut. Exactly. I don't know how you guys show so much of your own babies to people. Well, I mean, one thing about, I don't know if this is, I don't know how to share this with the, um, but one thing is that I'll, I would, what percentage of stuff actually makes it through to the oh, end? Oh, gosh. Like oh, yeah, 10? we should talk about that. 10%? Yeah. I mean, like we, a- you cut tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff, and you, and you send it to the client, and the client goes, this, this is all right. Uh, okay, well, let's try it with this way, and they give you notes and notes and notes, and you go back and forth, back and forth, and you go up, 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 up. Yeah, Your version numbers go that. all the way up, and you get to get to pretty far. To, I don't know how many versions you might go. And at a certain point, they go, yeah, I'm not feeling anymore. We're done with that one. That one's gone. We didn't talk about this at all, actually. It actually takes back, goes back to the first question with the processes of yeah. editing a trailer in the, in the industry, in mm-hmm. the marketing industry. And it is, uh, so you have your trailer, you cut it in, you submit it to the client for their thoughts. And either they don't like it at all and they never get back to you. It's mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. quiet, radio silence. Uh, that happens all the time. Yes. Another one that I happens. Has some really stuff I really like has never made it. Yep. But past of you one. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the good another possibility is that they start doing revisions. So they'll call mm-hmm. back with notes. You do the notes. You establish a back and forth. I've had a trailer go up to like version sixty four, where yeah. you, I've never had that happen. Luckily, but yeah, I I've mean, had stuff go ooh. up pretty high for you sure. You have late nights. You have you know is you do whatever you need to do to get it done, but. Things get up pretty high. A lot of times they'll rename them, and it's yeah. actually version seventy something. But it's, they, they call, call it version, version, oh, version sixteen. Six. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's <laughs> uh, that'll happen. Um, you know, <laughs> it's 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 all part of the process because there is a whole side on the client who they have to deal with their notes from their executives. Right. They like that. they're doing a whole song and dance on their side that we never get to see. So yeah. So yeah. I get the percentage of your stuff that you cut, the stuff you produce, is probably like. I don't even, 10% is generous. I would say it's. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's even less. Less than that, yeah. Yeah. Cut a lot. A lot of it doesn't get seen, but. I'd say 5%? Sure. You could go like yeah. months without finishing anything. Yeah. Um, that's what's so so intense about it, you know? Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I guess you could. <laughs> I have, I've luckily, I've, I've been lucky enough not to have that happen, oh, but some, well. of what, some of what I finish is still just like, eh. Not necessarily. <laughs> that sometimes, you, sometimes you cut something you think is amazing. It never goes anywhere. And sometimes you cut something you're like, eh, it's fine, whatever. And that's the one that finishes. You're like, okay, whatever. Yeah. Like, it's a really, know. really interesting mm-hmm. process because the, the, the film marketing industry has changed so much, even from like 30 years ago. Yeah. Like a producer I worked from with. 15 years ago. The producer, yeah. yeah. I mean, the producer I worked with, he'd been around since Star Wars, you know, and uh, a ton of stuff like that. So it's it's... The way they used to do it, there was not that many trailer houses. There were not that many editors yeah. working in trailers. So you would finish everything you did. Now there's yeah. a ton. And yeah. now there's 30, 40, like in LA yeah. alone. Yeah. So the competition goes up and the ma- the way the whole yeah. thing should Every movie, really Every movie has is being worked on by many different houses all across town. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. not like, it's not like, oh, I mean, every once in a while you are the guys working on this one movie. But if it's a big, big movie, no way. Yeah. It's being worked on everywhere. Yeah. 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 yeah, I don't know if well, there's. That's that. I think that's super interesting. Um, mm-hmm. to wrap it up a little bit, I mean, like, is there um any advice or or any suggestions you'd have for young editors who want to either start getting into trailer editing or um tips on trailer editing? Yeah. Or producing. Let's see. Uh, I'll uh I would say ahead. if you want to see if you want to if you want to build an interest in trailer editing, get your hands on. Mm-hmm. As it's movies and start cutting. When I was so I, mm. I started getting into editing when I was in high school, um, and then in college, this is what I did in college for fun. 
uh, <laughs> rather than go to parties and things. I would uh, <laughs> spend a lot of time just, I would make fan trailers of just my favorite movies and things, yeah. or I would do a lot of mashups and things like that. And that's a really popular thing online now, where I would just kind of like be like, hey, you know what would be funny is we put this movie and this movie together. Dan has and a like, pretty successful Up in Gran uh-huh, Torino I do. Uh, mashup. I have an Up in Gran Torino mashup that Roger Ebert retweeted. Oh, uh, I didn't know that. Point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well um, done. Got pretty popular. It's most, like, that was my most yeah. popular thing, I guess, I've ever made <laughs> so far. Uh, uh, anyway. To keep it succinct, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so edit, edit, edit. Um, mm-hmm. If that's something you end up wanting to do, the the career path, I think, is pretty clear. Yeah. It is like find any- a trailer house, get your foot in the door. You ev- Almost everyone starts as a PA, becomes an AE, an assistant editor. Mm-hmm. And you got to cut even when you're in those positions. Stay late. Uh, show stuff to the producers. Get feedback from them. And a lot of places, that if, you know, if they, if they like your work, if they think you're hardworking, they will do what they can and, and give you a good word or, mm-hmm. or promote you to an editor. That's the story that a lot of trailer houses, yep. I think. That's what happened to That's you. That's what Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's PA. Moved on up to AE and kept going and now an editor. So. Yeah. Awesome. It's one of the few places where path is fairly clear i think yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> well cool um i thought this was super cool um thank you guys for talking with nope, us you're welcome uh, if you guys want to do this you should cut your own trailer of your favorite movie and upload it to the forums we'll have a discussion link in the youtube description Absolutely. um if you're listening on itunes you can go to discuss.rocketjump.com or uh, school.rocketjump.com and find us in the discussions and find that kind of stuff there and, and upload it and we can give you direct feedback. Mm-hmm. Um, so oh, yeah. we'll have Daniel on the forums, Cherish and me are on the forums all the time, uh, Joey and Kevin and all of us here. Um, and then we want to say thank you uh, to Rode Microphones really quick just for being supportive of the podcast and all of that stuff. And uh, I, hope you, I hope we can see you guys' work. Mm-hmm. So uh, jump in the forums, uh, get yeah. some feedback, and uh, yeah. Please, please, please upload please. those trailers. We'd we love, love them. to yeah. see them. Check them out. Awesome. See what you got. Be so cool. Give you, those would be V ones, <laughs> and we'll give you some some feedback. Don't send us the dog waffles. Don't send us dog waffles yeah. if no you can help it. No dog waffles. Yes. All right. Thanks, guys. Okay. Bye. Thanks. <laughs>